Providence River Charter School with This Week in History, specifically July the 12th through 18th. Well, we'll start off with this photo. On December, or excuse me, December, on July the 18th of an undisclosed year, my mother was born. Happy birthday, Mom. Well, let's see, last week, if you remember, I mentioned that we were going to discuss the man that, uh, thank God, made that obsolete. Well, his name was Dr. William Morton, and Dr. Morton died, uh, let's see, 1868, July the 15th. Now, he is generally considered to be the first dentist to use true anesthesia during the removal of a tooth in 1849. Now, laughing gas had been used before, but what Dr. Morton found is that ether was actually a much better solution. Now, this is a, a later ether setup. Early on, he'd have been using the old, uh, you know, rag over the face. But uh, anyway, this was it. Now, I, I am so glad that he did this because I had a chance several years ago to, to visit a small uh, museum over in East Texas, and there was a dental chair from about 1850. Now, I've never been able to see one like it. I wasn't able to find a photograph of anything quite like it. This would have been from somewhat the same year, but this thing looked a lot more like a medieval torture device than anything. Uh, the, uh, there were straps to hold the legs down at the, uh, the ankle, as well as the knee, the waist. There's a strap that went across the chest uh, to hold both arms down. Also, one that went across the forehead to hold that back. But what was really scary about it is on one side of it, was attached an arm, and I'm sorry I couldn't find a photograph, uh, that had a, a, that would swing out over in front of the, of the patient. Uh, it had a seat on it that looked a lot like an old metal tractor seat. And apparently, uh, and there were two places on either side of the patient's head for feet. So apparently what would happen is the dentist would sit on this thing, swing it out, put his feet on either side of the patient's head, and that way he could use his back, his legs, his arms, his entire body to get leverage to pull the tube. So uh, I, I, thank, uh, I thank Dr. Morton. I'm glad he came up with the idea of using ether. But I got a lot better than that. On July the 14th of 1881, a man by the name of Henry McCarty, a.k.a. William Bonney, a.k.a. Billy the Kid was killed at the age of 21, supposedly. Now, I urge the residents of uh, Hyco in Hamilton, Texas, please hold your judgment until we're done here. But what we definitely know about Billy the Kid is that he was orphaned at the age of 14. He committed his first crime at the age of 16. Uh, there was a couple of robberies. He then went out to the Arizona and New Mexico Territory. Between 1877 and 1881, he joined a group of cattle rustlers. Uh, he took part in what was known as the Lincoln County War, and had a number of encounters with posses because he had a bounty on his head. Now, allegedly, he was killed by Sheriff Pat Garrett. By the way, this is a, these are actually the only two known photographs of Billy the Kid. This one, and then this one was discovered not too long ago. And that is believed to be him. Now, supposedly, on uh, July the 14th of 1881, Sheriff Pat Garrett killed Billy the Kid. Now, allegedly, this happened one night when Billy entered the home of an acquaintance and Pat Garrett was waiting for him. This would have been a couple of weeks after Billy had escaped from Garrett's jail, killing two deputies in the process. Now, over the years, legends have grown that the shooting by Garrett was actually staged so that the kid could, es could escape. Uh, most of these have been disproven. There's two that have survived. Uh, one of these involves a man by the name of Ollie B. Roberts, also sometimes known as Brushy Bill. That would be him, and that's Billy the Kid, uh, of Hamilton, Texas. Uh, in 1950, Roberts appealed to the governor of New Mexico for a pardon, claiming that he was Billy the Kid. He traveled to New Mexico, appeared in front of a judge, and in his appeal, though, there were significant details about Billy the Kid that he either muddled or just got flat out wrong. 
Uh, and so his, uh, his pardon by the governor was denied because the governor didn't believe he was actually building the kid. Now, over the years, also, there's been a number of attempts using, and I know this doesn't, you can't really see what's going on here too well, but using facial recognition te technology to use photographs of a young, brushy bill and to put them over uh, Billy the Kid's face. And so that's kind of what's going on in these photographs. That would actually be brushy bill as a young man. And these are with bits and pieces of the face. That'd be half and half. That's Bill. That would be the kid. Uh, but most of these uh, comparisons almost always come up negative. Uh, there was another man's family, 1938, a guy named John Miller of Arizona that made a similar claim. DNA tests were conducted, and the results were found to be useless in 2015. Now, this is one of those mysteries. I don't know that the Chamber of Commerce or the Tourist Bureau of Sumter, New Mexico, or Hamilton, Texas, ever really want to be solved because, quite frankly, it's good for the tourist business. This is Billy the Kid's grave in old Fort Sumter, New Mexico, and that is Billy the Kid, aka Brushy Bill Roberts, grave in Hamilton, Texas. So we'll see. Well, finally, on July the 13th of 1913, the very first pie-in-the-face gag appeared in movies. There is some dispute about who actually received it, but generally the credit goes to Mr. Fatty Arbuckle as being the receiver of the pie-in-the-face. Now, very shortly, of course, this became a, a staple of, of comedic, comedic films, especially in the silent era, but even into the 1930s and 40s to a certain extent. Uh, the record for the most number of pies thrown in one particular movie goes to Laurel and Hardy, generally. Nobody knows the exact number, but it's estimated to be about 4,000 pies were thrown in one particular scene. However, the greatest pie thrower of all time was undoubtedly Mo Howard of Three Stooges. Mo earned a reputation for having remarkable aim with a pie. He, uh, he did almost all the pie throwing in the Three Stooges uh, because if there was a, a miss, you might have to reshoot an entire scene, and that was a, a messy set to have to clean up to do a reshoot on. So generally when you see a pie hit somebody in the face in the Three Stooges, Moe's probably the one who threw it. As a matter of fact, he was so good that when other movies needed pies thrown, they often would hire Moe to come to the set and do the deed. There you go. Pie in the face, Cack. Well, thank you for your time. Let you know what's coming up next week. We will meet this man. One of history's greatest survivors. No doubt about it. Amazing life. That's all the time we have for this week. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carl Lanning, Brazos River Charter School, and we look forward to seeing you right here next week.